with you. It is good to see you this morning, and I am so thankful to be back with you with worship. We are gathering today. It is the fifth Sunday in this season after Pentecost. We are spending this season learning about the teachings of Christ in order that we might grow deeper in our faith and more faithful in our discipleship. So we give thanks to God that He's called us apart today in order that we might meet for those purposes. And, that whatever, and I would remind you today that whatever burdens you may be carrying, whatever challenges are in front of you, to know that God is already at work. And as we meet here today, we can be at peace, resting in His presence. So I invite you to stand with me as we greet one another in the name of the Lord. Peace be with you. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever.
Our first lesson this morning is a reading from the book of Amos, chapter 7, verses 7 through 17. Amos chapter 7, beginning with chapter 7. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, Go flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there. But never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is the temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your hands shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in, in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Our responsive reading this morning is Psalm 82. It can be located on page 804 of your hymnal. Psalm 82. And we'll be responding in alternating half verses. God is seated in the divine council and in the midst of the gods holds judgment. Along the law may judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked. Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are God's, God-like offspring, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise, O God, judge the earth, for you belong to all the nations. Our epistle reading this morning is a reading from Paul's letter to the believers in Colossae. No big Colossians. We'll be starting with chapter 1 and reading verses 1 through 14. Colossians 1, 1 through 14. And Paul writes, Paul, an epistle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before, the word of the truth, the gospel, that has come to you, just as it is bearing fruit and 
growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all strength that comes from His glorious power, and may you be prepared to everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in his inheritance of his saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. space we do so in the knowledge that we come before the presence of God and we carry with us our desires, our needs, and our prayers, and our joys. So I invite you now, would you pray with me? Glorious and loving God, you continually bless us whether we deserve it or not. You extend your love to us as you have done so through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, offering to guide us and lead us down the path of righteousness for your sake. Father, we give thanks to you because you never turn away from us. You are always, always reaching, always loving, always extending compassion and mercy. And we give you thanks, Lord. We ask now that as we are in this space, that you would hear the prayers of our hearts and our minds. And Father, you would give us the stillness of your peace that surpasses all understanding. That as we wait here with you, we would be rejuvenated. And that, Father, we would be infused with your strength. Be with us now, God, as we read these words and as we reflect upon them. Prepare to come to your table today. Be with us, O oh God. May the words of our own mouths and the meditations of our own hearts be pleasing in your sight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you stand with me for the reading of the Gospel? From the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Friends and family, hear now the word of the Lord. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right, the right answer, do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on him. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him 
to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And he said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks God. God. You may be sick. As many of you know, throughout uh, kind of the other side of the pandemic, uh, people are out and about now more than they ever were, but we kind of went through a period and are still moving through a period culturally uh, called the Great Resignation. Has anybody heard of that, the Great Resignation? Maybe you've seen that on the news. Lots of folks are starting to change jobs. Now, they went home for a couple of years, sat down in a chair, and kind of went, you know what, I think I could do something else. And people turned in their notices, and they have jumped ship to go to new companies and new opportunities. Lots of folks have started new businesses. Uh, people are changing. The workforce is changing. And you notice it when you go out to eat, and they say, well, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a wait because we are short-staffed. We don't have as many people as we used to have. And people are moving. People are changing jobs. Lots of folks have decided they don't like doing what they're doing. They want to do something else. And the main driving force in doing something else is what? A better fitment for me. Maybe it's pay. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's energy. Maybe it's uh, being able to uh, spend more time with your family, to travel more. People are trying to put themselves in better positions to take care of their own personal needs. And we can't argue with that too much. We, we do the same thing. We're always trying to position ourselves in such a place that we can get the most bang for our buck, the, the most return on our investments. It's, it's who we are, and it's wise, it's smart. But I want you to hear today in the gospel that Jesus is flipping the script on what it means to receive and how being in the kingdom of God, pursuing the gift of eternal life, changes how we view and think about ourselves and think about the world. Now this text obviously opens up with a kind of an offensive statement. A lawyer it says. And when we think about lawyers, we think about folks that are very smart, we think about people that have the gift of gab and the people who have the gift of weaseling their way through conversation to get where they want to go. And I want to focus on this character today. We could get into all the things about who the Samaritan was, and who the Levite was, and who the priest was. Maybe you've heard a sermon like that before. Honing in on how much a denarii is worth. But today I want us to focus just specifically on this one character who asked this question. Now when I think of lawyers, I immediately think of Alexander Chenault. First guy that jumps to my mind. Why? Because his billboards are everywhere. I found out the other day that his billboards are plastered everywhere. And I've preached on this before about seeing his billboards. Uh, the reason they're there is he has a deal with uh, the advertising companies. Maybe you guys did, uh, already knew this. But uh, if they don't have the advertising filled, he gets a discounted rate to throw up his sign until they sell that blank advertising. Now, it makes sense. Alexander Shinar puts his stuff all over the place because he wants you to call him when? When you have some sort of travesty, crisis, accident that's not your fault, call him, he's going to take care of you, and he's going to make sure that uh, you get what you deserve. The compensation is your due due to whatever hardship you face. But we know with any lawyer, any injury person, any ambulance chaser out there on the planet, they don't want to help you just to help you, do they? No. They want to help because they can get paid too. They can get paid a lot of money in that big settlement. And uh, you know what? They might take close to 50% of that settlement in winning this non-go-to-trial case for you, settling out of court in order that they can get paid and you can get paid. And we tend to operate that way. Yeah, I want to help, but what's in it for me? 
Sometimes we'll pay lip service to it and go, oh, I just want to do it just because I have it in my heart. But in our back of our mind, we hope that someone might see that we did good. I want people to think well of me, so I'm going to do it. I want to help, but you know what? It would be nice to be appreciated every once in a while. You ever said that? I say that all the time. I, I wish y'all would appreciate me. Right? My kids just stare at me like they're staring at me and they've already zoned out. We want people to pay attention to us and we want to be recognized for the good that we do. But Jesus is flipping the script in the way we think about ourselves and think about our place in the world. The lawyer asks this one question, right? What does he want? And we might interpret him today to be somebody who has achieved in our own cultural settings you know, a Harvard Law degree, he's well respected in his community, he has a nice practice, uh, he has a nice house, he has a nice family, he's got a vacation home at Panama City Beach and a lake house on Lake Martin. He's got both things. He can go where he wants to go. Travels all over. He's at the top in the pinnacle of his game. And yet somewhere inside of him he, he wants something more. And so he asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to get that trophy? How do I get that plaque on my wall? How do I walk with that achievement? And Jesus says to him very plainly, what does it say in the law? And he knows the law. We might hear him in a slightly smart other tone. The law says, you ask the wrong guy. Obviously, I know it. I'm a lawyer. I'm at the top of my game. I know what it is. The law says you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and you should love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, right. So just do that. Just do those things. But oh, how complicated we make it, don't we? This faith that we're engaged in is not a complicated faith. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And number two, love your neighbor as yourself. That is it. You're not going to earn your way into salvation. That's a gift. God's grace has given that to you. Your job, your response is love God, love your neighbor. That's it. It's not about picking out colors of carpet. It's not about organizing big things. Uh, those are all things that we do, but that's not, that's not it. Love God, love your neighbor. That is it. And Jesus says, do that. And the lawyer says, well, who is my neighbor? And Jesus tells the parable we know oh so well of the Good Samaritan take care of somebody when there's nothing in it for you. Nothing. Jesus is flipping the script on how we view ourselves and the world we live in. The kingdom of God, eternal life, is a gift that through salvation you have already been given. It's yours. And it's yours because Christ makes a way for you where there is no way. By His death, by His resurrection, by His love, by His compassion, by His forgiveness, you, through the power of the repentance of your sins and turning to follow Him in a profession of faith that I will follow you. Jesus is Lord and I will go this way. I will love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I will love my neighbor as myself. You have been gifted eternal life. But to talk to some of us, you think we didn't have anything. We're still scratching, we're still clawing, still trying to earn stuff from this dirt. Things that will pass away, achievements that I hang on my own wall, that one day will get moldy spots on them, and my kids will say, now, should we keep this? Now that he's gone, and one of them will hopefully say, well, it's kind of neat. And then the other one will go, throw it away, right? And they'll chuck it, and it'll be gone. And I won't, and it won't mean anything. And I can live as someone who 
who's dedicated to the things that I think I've earned. Or I can live as Jesus calls me, as someone who's already been given a key to the kingdom. And there's nothing left for me to do but love others the way I've been loved. The lawyer wants another trophy. And Jesus says, that's not the trophy. It's not the achievement. The gift is already present. So listen. Don't be afraid to love extravagantly. Don't be afraid to do things that might cost you. Don't be afraid to do things on behalf of the power and the presence of God because you know it's the right thing to do. Because there's already a place, there's already a seat for you in the kingdom of God. What else do you want? Amen. The invitation to the table today is to receive the divine mystery of the presence of Christ through no power of our own. It's to come, it's to kneel, it's to submit in humility and to be fed by the presence of our Lord. And I want to tell you today, Christ invites all to his table. You need not be a member of this church or a Methodist. Christ invites all to his table who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of majesty and power, we tremble when we become aware of who you are. Who are we that we should visit us or expect something from us? We confess our preference for the predictable. We admit our resistance to your spirit. We acknowledge our misuse of your gifts to us. We prefer our divisions to your unity. Forgive us, O God, of power and might, that we might forgive. Draw us back into a right relationship with you and with one another. Amen. Take the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Today, I want to share with you just a few announcements that we want to be made aware of today. Uh, you'll notice on your green sheet, which is flipped over and backwards for your enjoyment, are a couple of announcements here uh, to look at. And I want to just remind you that once we conclude service today, we will meet in the back for Sunday school and fellowship. Uh, we've got Bible study on Wednesday nights. We're still continuing our history of Christianity study, and we want you to be there for that. Uh, our softball team starts playing this Monday. They start at 7 o'clock on the south side fields in Phoenix City. Come and support them. You can be our rah-rah cheering section there. We'll be practicing tonight at 5 o'clock right here in the field at Oliver. So if you want to come back off the horn and, and yell uh, jeers at us or whatever, try to encourage us, you, you are welcome to do that. We have an admin council meeting coming up on July 24th. And there is a regional leadership meeting that I don't want you to miss that's going to be in Dothan on August 23rd, that's at 7 o'clock Eastern. We're going to leave from here about 5 o'clock and go down and learn some more about some of the things that are going on in the Methodist Church. I know we've got a lot of questions about what's going on and who's going to be where and uh, what sort of decisions might be in front of us. This is a regional meeting with other lay people. The bishop will be there, the district superintendents will be there to answer questions and to help talk through uh, kind of some of the uncertainty that's in front of us. So I want you to be there. All right, and I do have one other announcement. Our friend Liam has a birthday today. He didn't want me to bring it up, but because I'm a good pastor, I brought it up anyway. He is uh, 12 years old, I believe. So we're excited about that. Uh, make sure to uh, slap him on the back and tell him what a good boy he is after we conclude our service. So I say to you, those are the announcements and the opportunities in front of you to engage with the kingdom of God and to serve in Christ's name. So let us now offer to the Lord our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, and ourselves.
invite you to remain standing and to turn with me in your hymnal to page 9. And the responses can be found there as we join together in the great thanksgiving and invite God to be present with us. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this so often as you eat it in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you receive it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us be bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. morning as we invite you to come to the altar today. We invite you to kneel and you'll be receiving uh, the elements uh, through a mode called intinction and you'll be gifted a piece of bread and invited that to dip that in the chalice and then consume the elements. And then I'll ask that you remain here until we dismiss you uh, with a blessing. So would you come as you feel like? <laughs>
let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we who have received this gift today would go forward to live as people of your kingdom, not afraid of what may come, not afraid to give, not afraid to love, not people who cling to this world, but cling to you. And this forward now in the power of your Holy Spirit, that our actions of love and our actions of compassion may represent you to all who would hear and receive the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Christ is with us. May the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always.